Uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, first of all, uh, at the outset, uh, let me say uh, happy um, Climate Action Day. Uh, you know, the climate change issue is critical and at this moment, uh, it's an unprecedented time in human history requiring globalized uh, collaboration, strong leadership, uh, political will and commitment, as well as uh, innovativeness, human ingenuity, more than ever before for the following reasons. The effect of climate change has caused uh, unprecedented damage to the world, but inadequately responded to. It exacerbated poverty and instability around the world, especially in poorest sections of the world, like in Africa and my country. Our ability to combat its effects has been seriously challenged. And let me uh, correlate climate change with COVID-19, as COVID-19 added an additional layer of uh, vulnerability to poorer regions who depend on fragile environments and heavily impacted by the effects of climate change, which are often further impacted by poverty and weak health systems. Those hard hit by climate change impacts have already lost adaptive capacity to COVID-19 and vulnerability has alarmingly increased. And thus climate change impacts have contributed to COVID-19, both in terms of inflicting the disease as uh, WHO uh, asserts, and reduced adaptive capacity to withstand the pandemic. Even though the shutdown measures in response to COVID-19 have yielded some mitigation effects, our already meager efforts towards climate change adaptation have been another severe challenge. Hence, responses to climate adaptation are now under serious threat. So climate change is therefore an existential threat. If COVID-19 contributes to be there for indefinitely, uh, for longer time, our capacity to adapt will rapidly and sharply continue to decline. So therefore, this calls for a new understanding of the situation and collaboration towards climate change adaptation in the context of the third world countries uh, like in Africa. Immediate COVID-19 crisis we are facing today has much to teach us about an even more existential threat, that is the climate change itself. What we have to take out uh, of our short-term experience of COVID-19 responses to combat climate change. Number one, uh, when we stand together, we can be more resilient. COVID-19 has taught us how to collaborate be creative and stand together, set up with new measures and innovations. Many of its response measures have been undertaken through solidarity and collaboration regardless of geographic, racial, class, and gender differences. Uh, the whole world has shown extraordinary solidarity to protect humanity and human civilizations. And if we did this in the face of the pandemic, that is killing humans, why not we do the same in the face of the peril that is killing the planet? Number two, our recovery plans should be focusing on dual adaptation, both climate change and the pandemic. So therefore, we have to have ambitious targets to manage a safe, green and sustainable recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. And green recovery can be very effective in combating adaptation and mitigation measures in the context of the third world, which will use digitalization to boost jobs and growth, secure the resilience of societies, and put the health of our environment first. In this regard, conservation-based tourism has to be emphasized, as, um, as there are clear links between health and the environment, biodiversity loss, and proximity to wildlife, can create the conditions for illness to spread. Research suggests that the emergence of new human disease is closely linked to loss and degradation of our ecosystem and habitats, which in turn is driven by climate change. 
resource extraction, urban and agricultural expansion, and pollution and among the others. Rising temperature have been linked with climate in the range of, you know, malarial mosquitoes and the spread of malaria and the Zika virus, as you know, a growing human pressure on the natural environment responsible for zoonosis, a disease that can be transmitted from vertebrate animals to humans. Example, rabies, anthrax, or ringworm. Other environmentally related illness such as climate, lung, and heart conditions due to long-term exposure uh, to pollution make viruses like COVID-19 even more dangerous. However, according to the IPCC Assessment Report 5, biodiversity can act as a buffer against the spread of pathogens. Healthy ecosystems translate into resilient and healthy societies. Biodiversity conservation, climate mitigation, and overall environmental protection can serve as a confluence to hold the effects of climate change and COVID-19 as diseases that are caused due to environmental degradation. Therefore, focusing on nature conservation can both mitigate carbon emission and this is proliferation, creating green jobs towards enhancing adaptive capacities for millions of poor citizens in developing countries. Now we need a strong commitment from political leadership and you know the school system, the teachers and the students can participate uh, in this regard. Uh, when I say political leaders, they must learn from their short-term pandemic uh, response to COVID-19 and demonstrate strong and renewed commitment to combat climate change. They have to be transparent and bold enough in their domestic policies towards climate change. I hope the new, uh, the, the upcoming election, uh, which will be con concluded in today or tomorrow by the United States people, will give us some room for political engagement of United States, which is a very important country uh, for climate change. They have to be able to build trust among the global public and the institutions in their practical responses consistent to their policy rhetoric. The last but not least, they have to demonstrate their commitment by securing funds that can meaningfully build the adaptive capacity of vulnerable segments of the world. Here in Ethiopia, we have schools in forest program where our students and teachers participate. And we have climate resilient green growth initiative where we go for climate smart agriculture, green uh, energy sources, renewable energies, and Green Legacy Initiative, where 9 billion tree seedlings were planted, and teachers and the students were actively engaged and continue to engage in these programs. So thank you very much for having me in this uh, program. And uh, let me conclude my speech uh, at this moment. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for your uh, sharing your meaningful uh, insights. Um, we are really delighted to have you online. Uh, and it is always so important to have the African voice as well. Um, so thank you so much uh, for this. Thank you.